There are already a lot of really good videos out there on how to install Home Assistant, so why make another one? Well, in this video, I'm going to focus specifically on the things you need to do in order to get a Sonoff running Tasmoda in Home Assistant. We're going to set up Home Assistant with the few most important things that you need to get running, including Mosquito for MQTT. I'm also going to go over the process for flashing a Sonoff with Tasmoda because the process has changed, and the good news is it's gotten easier. Away we go. Home Assistant is a software that runs on a ton of different operating systems. There are at least a dozen different ways to install Home Assistant. But of all these methods for installing Home Assistant, there's one that really stands out. HassIO. What HassIO does is make pretty much everything you need to do in Home Assistant available in the user interface that's accessible from the web. There are already a lot of really good videos out there on how to install Home Assistant with HassIO. And to be honest, it's not a very hard process. So I'm going to go through this part pretty fast. First of all, if you're coming from a previous installation of Home Assistant, grab all of your YAML files and any other files that you might want to use again, like icons or themes, and back them up in some other place besides your SD card. You'll be able to use those files again once you get HassIO up and running. Now, if you're starting from scratch, you will need a Raspberry Pi, and you're going to need a micro SD card. The Home Assistant developers recommend at least 32 gigabytes and a class 10. I can tell you, I tried doing it on an 8 gigabyte card, and after a little while, I ran out of space. So go big. There's a page on the Home Assistant website that lays out the installation process step by step. But it essentially goes like this. You download the HassIO image. You download Etcher. And if you want to use Wi-Fi, you'll need some sort of a code editor like Notepad++ or they give you a link right here to Visual Studio Code, which works great. The nice thing about Etcher and Video Studio Code is that they're both available for Mac or PC or Linux. Another new feature is the ability to use the Wi-Fi chip on your Raspberry Pi to connect your Pi to your network. I'm still going to use an Ethernet connection, but if you, for some reason, wanted or needed to use your Wi-Fi, there's a way to do that. After you've written the HassIO image to your SD card, if you used Etcher, it will automatically unmount it. So you need to pull it out and then put it back in your computer. When you do that, it'll show up like a drive. Navigate into that drive to this folder, find this file, and in this place, put your Wi-Fi SSID and password, and then save it. Now you can unmount the SD card, take it out of your computer, put it in your Raspberry Pi. If you're going to use Ethernet instead of Wi-Fi, you don't have to do any of that. Once your SD card is in your Pi, connect your Ethernet cable and power up your Pi. Within a few seconds, you'll be able to go to hasio.local colon 8123, or if you know the IP address of your Pi, you can put the IP address colon 8123, and you'll pull up this initial page, which will tell you that it's updating Home Assistant. It says 20 minutes. I didn't time it, but it did take a while. But that's okay, because there's some things we can do in the meantime. Now, while HassIO is updating Home Assistant, we're going to want to set the IP address of your Pi static or reserved in your router. Every router is different, so I can't tell you exactly what you need to do in your router. But it is important that you do this, because if your router reboots, or for some other reason, the IP address for your Raspberry Pi that's running Home Assistant changes, then a lot of the devices that you're using won't be able to find it again. Now, if you're coming from an old installation of Home Assistant, you're going to want your new installation to have the same IP address as your old one. Because if you're like me, you've got a dozen Sonoffs or more and other devices around your house that are going to be looking to that old IP address. So hopefully you know what that old IP address is and you can go into your router and set the new installation to that old IP address. Got it? Good. Okay, by now, Home Assistant should be updated and we're ready to get started installing the other things that we need in order to control our tasmatized Sonoffs. HassIO manages other programs that you'll want to use as add-ons. To install add-ons in HassIO, in the left sidebar, click the HassIO button. Then in the upper right hand corner, you click this little shopping bag. The first, and probably most important, add-on that we're going to use is Mosquito. That's the MQTT broker. And I don't know about you, but pretty much all of my connected devices use MQTT, especially all of my tasmatized Sonoffs. So Mosquito is priority number one. You'll find Mosquito under the built-in add-ons section. So click install, and while that's running, click the website button. Every add-on has that little website button, and it'll take you to a page on the Home Assistant website that'll give you some more detailed instructions on how to set up that add-on and how it works. Once Mosquito's installed, open it up and go to the options section. Here you can put in a username and password. You don't have to use one, but why not? And if you're coming from an old installation of Home Assistant and you used MQTT, make sure you use the same username and password so all of your already installed devices will be able to connect. There's one last step to getting Mosquito up and running, and that requires us 
to edit our configuration.yaml file. So in order to do that, we're going to install what I think is probably the coolest and most useful add-on in HASS.io. It's called the configurator. I would have called it the configure in a tour, but they didn't ask me. The configure in a tour lets you access and edit YAML files from the web user interface. Oh, what? That's right. Of course, that includes your configuration.yaml file, but all of your other YAML files as well, and probably other text files too, but I'm not 100% sure about that. So install the configurator, and under the options, set a username and password. That's probably extra important with the configurator, since anybody who gets into your user interface would be able to edit and change and potentially screw up your configuration file. I'm not one who believes that somebody would do that on purpose, maliciously. It's a whole lot more likely that your kids or your wife will get in there and mess up your configuration while they're trying to turn on the Christmas lights or something like that. Not my wife. That wouldn't, that wouldn't, nope, she wouldn't, she wouldn't do that. Mm -mm. Once you got the username and password, save and start. There isn't much else you can do to set up the configurator. But one cool thing that they point out on the Home Assistant website is that you can make a dedicated button on your sidebar that will take you straight to the configurator. That's cool. To do that, just grab this text here, copy it, open the configurator, find a place to paste it, save it, and done. Where exactly you put it in the configuration file doesn't really matter, but alignment does matter. So make sure that the main heading is all the way to the left and that the other columns are lined up properly. But if you cut and paste the whole thing, should work fine. Now that we've got the configurator in ATOR up and running, and we can edit our configuration.yaml file, we're ready to finish setting up Mosquito. Okay, yeah, you could have set up the configurator first and then done all the Mosquito setup at the same time. Yeah, you're right. Okay, I did it backwards. Sorry. If you go to the instruction page for the Mosquito add-on, down at the bottom, you'll find some lines for your configuration.yaml file. Copy those, go to the configurator, paste them in. Put your username and password in, or if you didn't use one, just put a hashtag to the left of those two lines. That way Home Assistant will just ignore those lines, but you won't have to delete them in case maybe later you come back and decide you want to use them. While we're here editing our configuration.yaml file, we're going to paste in these lines so that we're ready to set up a Sonoff as a switch once we get Tasmoda installed. The important parts here are the MQTT topics, especially in the middle section where it says Sonoff. That's going to have to match what you call your Sonoff in the Tasmoda software. But for now, you can just leave the topic as Sonoff. You can change it later when you have more than one. And you will have more than one. Once you've pasted those lines in, you can save and restart Home Assistant. That's another really cool thing that they've added to HASS.io. It's a super convenient way to really quickly restart some components or the whole thing. Now, if you've made big changes to your configuration file, it's probably still a good idea to hit the Verify Config button and make sure you didn't mess anything up. Speaking of screwing up your configuration file, there's one more add-on we should probably include before we're done, and that's Samba. If you haven't used or heard of Samba before, it's a simple way to make some of the folders on your Raspberry Pi shareable on your network. So you can access them from another computer and back up or edit your YAML files or whatever else you've got stored in there. This is really handy if you do screw up your configuration.yaml file and you can't get the user interface to come back up. Of all the add-ons we've set up so far, Samba's the easiest. Hit install, set the options you want, including a username and password. Again, good idea in this case. Then set your interface to ETH0 if you're using a wired connection, or WLAN0 if you're using the Wi-Fi on the Pi. Save and start. That's it. Now there are still a lot of ways to install Tasmoda on a Sonoff. There's Platform IO with Atom, there's the Arduino IDE, and there's even something called ESP Tools. I've been using the Arduino IDE, and it's working well, so that's what I'm going to show you how to do. If you saw my other video on this, it's similar, but easier and better. If you've never flashed a Sonoff before, the first thing to do is go download the Arduino IDE for whichever operating system you're using. Unzip it, do whatever it says to install it. Once the Arduino IDE is installed, the first thing we're going to do is go to this website here and grab this URL. The nice thing about using this one versus the one I used in my old video is that this URL will always give you the latest stable version of this board manager. Copy this line, then in the Arduino IDE, go to preferences and paste this line where it says additional board manager URL. While we're here, look up at the top of this preferences page. You'll see a spot where it says sketchbook location. Take a good look at that file path because in just a minute, we're gonna need to navigate to that folder to include all the libraries that we'll need for Tasmoda. Now hit OK and let's go grab Tasmoda. 
on the Tasmoda website, go to releases and grab the source code zip file. Save it someplace where you'll be able to find it and then extract it. Now, wherever you extracted it, you'll find a folder that says Sonoff, Tasmoda, and the version number. And in that folder, you'll find another folder called lib or lib. And inside that folder will be all the libraries that you need for Tasmoda. Select them all, copy them, and now navigate to your sketchbook location that was showing up on your preferences page. Now when you get to that Arduino folder, you'll see a folder called Libraries. Open that folder and paste all the libraries that you just copied from the Tasmoda Lib folder. That's it. Now go back to where you downloaded Tasmoda, and in the Sonoff Tasmoda version folder, you'll see another folder called Sonoff. Open that one up, scroll down till you find sonoff.ino, and click it. That'll open the Arduino IDE. First thing to do here is go to Tools, Board, Boards Manager, and then search for the ESP8266 Boards Manager and install it, or in my case, update it. Once that's done, you need to find the user config.h file. Some people have run into trouble if they've got their Sonoffs running Tasmoda and they change their Wi-Fi ID or password. Those Sonoffs could be lost in limbo trying to connect to a network that doesn't exist. And since they can't connect to the network, you can't connect to them to tell them what network to connect to. But thanks to Mark M and some diligent research on his part, we've got a really simple solution. Rather than put in our SSID and Wi-Fi password at the beginning, we're going to change this line here from WPS config to Wi-Fi manager. What that will do is anytime that the Sonoff can't connect to Wi-Fi, it will create its own Wi-Fi network that you can connect to and then give it the SSID and password for your Wi-Fi network. In the user config.h file, you can set a different project name if you want, but you don't have to, because you can do that from the Tasmoda main page. You can set your MQTT broker IP address, user, and password, or you don't have to. That's something else you can also do from the Tasmoda main page later. So really, all you have to do is change the WPS config to Wi-Fi manager, and you're ready to upload. So open up tools and make sure all your settings match these. Again, this is a little different than the last time, but once you've got everything looking like this, you're golden. The last thing to do here is to connect your Sonoff to your computer using your FTDI adapter and hold down the onboard button when you power it up. You can do that in a couple ways. You can connect the FTDI adapter to the Sonoff, hold down the button, and then plug the USB cord into your computer. That'll do it. Or you can plug the USB and the FTDI adapter into your computer, plug in the ground, transfer, and receive pins, but leave the three volt pin out, then hold the button, then put the three volt pin in. That'll work too. It all depends on how nimble your fingers are and what your dexterity modifier is. When you think you've got it in programming mode, hit upload and see what happens. Most of the problems people were having before had to do with the libraries. Either they had libraries that they didn't need or they had old versions of libraries. And in some cases, they were using a newer version of Tasmoda that included new and unique libraries that just aren't available through the libraries manager in the Arduino IDE. That's why copying all the files from the Tasmoda lib folder into the Arduino sketchbook library folder is so important. That guarantees that you'll have all the libraries that you need. Now, if your upload worked, you can reset your Sonoff by disconnecting and reconnecting the power, and then watch your Wi-Fi networks for one to show up that's called Sonoff something. Connect to that. Now, in most cases, that'll automatically open up a window that'll give you the option of putting in your Wi-Fi SSID and password. If that window doesn't open right away, go to your browser and type in this number. That'll take you to the same page. After you set up the Sonoff with your Wi-Fi SSID and password, go to your router or an app like Thing and find the IP address of your new Sonoff by searching for connected devices with the name Sonoff. Once you've got the IP address, you can open up the Tasmoda main page and finish setting up your device. Put your MQTT information in there, set your switch mode, and change your project name if you want. If all went well, you'll end up with this. This is everything we should have. This is the Tasmoda main page for the switch. This is the configurator nator entry switch section right here, as well as the MQTT section. And then this is the main page. We've got a video of the switch at the same time. So I can click the switch on here. You see the light goes on, the relay goes on, and it goes on in Tasmoda. I can push the button here, turns it back off, and it turns off in the software as well. Now I don't have the other switch connected, but you can connect another switch to GPIO 14 and ground 
uh, that hasn't changed. So you can watch the other video to see how to do that. The best reason to do that is because in Tasmoda, this button has a lot of extra functions, this main onboard button. And so if you press it multiple times or press it and hold it down, it will activate functions in the board, um, which can mess up your configuration. And it's good that it does that because those are, those are good functions that we want to have, but you don't necessarily want the button that somebody presses on your wall to have the ability to like reset the board, uh, for example. That's the best reason for using an external switch instead of just connecting to this switch here. I wanna show you inside the configuration here as well for configure module, it's a Sonoff Basic. I do have it set to GPIO 14, so I could put a switch on that. And for the MQTT broker, you're gonna see this is the IP address of the Pi that's running my Home Assistant. There's my user. It's defined right here and the password is right there no big deal then this topic this here has to match this that's how you get it to communicate that has to match here's the same the username and password are there so that's it so that's it it's crazy how fast some of this stuff changes the last video I did about how to flash Tasmoda on a Sonoff was only a few months ago and already a lot of that information is outdated. But I think these methods, both for installing Home Assistant with HASS.io and installing the Tasmoda firmware the way we did here, are gonna last a little longer. At least we can hope, right? Hope that was helpful to you. You should know by now, I'm no expert, but ask me whatever questions you have and I'll do my best to answer. If you haven't seen it yet, I've started a website and along with posting more detailed descriptions and product links, I've also got a poll on the website so you can vote for what you wanna see next. As of right now, it looks like the Home Assistant dashboard is leading the pack. But the D1 Mini in your car, the three-way switch another way, aren't far behind. So check it out and get your vote in. I'm just going to keep updating that poll, taking off the videos I've done, and putting new ideas on there. Don't worry, I am never going to run out of projects to do. Like, never. That's all for now. As always, thanks for watching. Until next time, adios.